Okay, let me give you an overview of this job. So this is an air source heat pump going in with underfloor heating on the ground floor. We've got a master bedroom and a master en suite on the upstairs. That's just gonna be radiator and towel rail. Now, they've got a bit of an issue here with floor height. So we're having to use chipboard flooring with uh, grooves cut in. So we've got 22 mil OSB flooring. Now this stuff's actually pretty good because it allows a 16 mil MLCP pipe. A lot of the other brands, they only offer 12 mil. So with 16 mil, we actually get a higher output, which means we can run it at a lower flow temperature and uh, yeah, hopefully achieve some higher efficiency. So this board here, all these black lines are where the pipes actually are covered. So if ever they're laying any sort of floor on the top, which might be like timber and they need to screw it in, as long as they screw it onto these red houses, which are indicated, I think they're houses, yeah, with the black dots, then we should be totally fine. So this is the lounge area. So we're having to do this individually in each room. So the only issue with this OSB type flooring is the fact that it's only got grooves running one way. So we can't actually run up the room. We can only go up and down. So we're having to feed the underfloor heating pipes underneath the floor. Mark is kindly laying it all down for us, doing a brilliant job. And yeah, we've just got one zone in at the minute. So like most of our um, air source heat jobs, this is all gonna be open loop. So no mixing valves, anything like that. It's all gonna be designed to the same temperature. And let me just show you where we've got underfloor heating manifold located. So this job here, we kind of been brought in quite late. So we're trying to get this in as quick as possible. So as you can see, we've actually switched to MLCP rather than copper. So we've got the red and blue obviously indicates either hot or cold, flow and return, etc. And at this stage, we've kind of just run it into first fix, like rough location only, just so the builders can crack on. So as you can see, we've kind of got it in quite loosely at the moment. There you go, and that's just popping up there. So this is our underfloor heating manifold cupboard. Now the stuff we're using is by a firm called ProWarm, and uh, they've been really helpful actually, really quick surface, um, highly recommend them. And uh, yeah, they seem to be pretty good. So very quick turnaround on the quotation, etc. So as you can see, our underfloor heating pipe work, it's actually dropping down into the floor and then going up into each area. So I just need to make sure I get all these insulated. And that's where the manifold location's going. So we've got two bathrooms going here, one going here. The windows turned up yesterday, so hopefully this is all gonna start getting closed up. And then once our underfloor heating's down, we can start getting into our final first fix locations. Okay, let me show you where the internal components of our air source heat pump job is going. So as you can see, we've got all our tools set up here, rapid wall raven for our pipe fixings, majority 28 mil. So our MLCP run, so our flow and return to the underfloor heating manifold, flow and return to the central heating, hot, cold and hot return all run underneath this joist space here. So that's why it's all pre-insulated. It's quite easy just to feed through, had to get it done really quick so the guys could start getting this floor down. Now this part here, this was actually external. So this was all outside, but they've almost adjoined the house to which was the outhouse. And this area here is now gonna be our plant room. So our MLCP at the moment is just fed through to the bottom of this plant room. And we're just about to start getting our copper into position. So Bailey has joined me this week and he's been very helpful getting all the air source heat pump into location. In fact, to budge a lot of these windows because they're all in the way, triple glaze, which will weigh a ton. And it's just now getting set up our wall ravens on the wall, making a plan of action. And we're gonna show you how we're gonna start piping this system up and hopefully you find it quite helpful. So anyway, let me chuck the camera down and we can begin getting this copper in place. Right, so the first components go on the wall other than our rapid route is the V-Cement internal unit. Now, if you order any V-Cement air source heat pump that is on the 150A range, you will receive this internal unit as well as the external air source heat pump. Now, inside of this is a little buffer. You've got a four-way SB valve. It's basically the control center for the air source heat pump, so it is mandatory. You can't get away with not having it, but what I'll do is I'll show you the internals on it a bit later on when it's installed and explain to you its complete function. So 
quite similar to a boiler. You've got your piwet connections on the bottom here. Now we've actually got a jig that we're going to be installing on it. So once we get it all hung, I'll show you how that all connects together. They're a little bit odd, I would say, these fittings. You need O-rings that kind of push and slide in. It is very heavy, I'd say this is a two-man lift. A couple of things to bear in mind with this internal unit is it needs to be at least 100, uh, 100 mil clearance on the sides and 150 mil clearance on the top. So this is our first put of call really. So we're gonna have the majority of the pipe work going into this unit. So we need to get that set up. So our plan at the moment is all our MLCP comes in pretty rough down here. I'm not gonna lie, it's not ideal, but it's the only way we could do it. And we are gonna run our flow and returns from our century and underfloor heating along the bottom. That will go straight into the unit. Hopefully, because the air source heat pump's going on the external side of this wall, the flow and return to the air source heat pump will just bust straight through the wall. Cylinder's not arrived yet, so we can come to that at a later date. So our first point of call is to get these flow and returns along, get this unit mounted, and hopefully that'll be a good start to get us all organized. Okay, when you are trying to hang this internal unit, the actual mounting bracket is actually screwed to the pallet. So make sure you don't chuck the pallet away with this bracket, you're gonna need this. So you get a kit usually, if you're buying it directly through Viesman or Viesman Direct, you will get this jig here. Now it's quite easily to forget to put this on, which I've done before. Um, you don't necessarily need it. I see other installers not using it, but it is quite handy. You've got all your flushing points on it. So with this bracket here, you get, or in the same box as a jig, you get this instruction manual, and then you get all these fixings here. Now within that packet, are these two tiny little plastic, almost like grub fixings. So what they do is they actually push through the back of that bracket there. So basically that <laughs> tiny thing there, that pushes into the back of this bracket and then you can push this cross section on here. And then that cross section then attaches to this brass section here. So basically it just sets it all at the right height, keeps it nice and level. So I'll get this all attached now and get it put on the wall. Right, we're making a bit of progress. Mark is well underway installing the uh, OSB groove chipboard flannels for the underfloor heating. Did I say flannels? I meant panels. Right. <laughs> so, 
we're kind of cracking on here. So this is our flow and return coming out of the unit. So not the flow and return to the heat pump, but the flow and return that's going to our heat emitters. Now, like I said, we've got a small radiator zone, so a few rads, and the majority of it's all underfloor heating, so that's all teed in together. Bailey has got the pain in the ass task of sorting out the mess of MLCP. The plan is we've got a 300 litre cylinder going somewhere here, and we're going to run the pipes up and over, and then hopefully get it all neatly organised up there. Now, you've just seen me connecting up this jig underneath, so it is a little bit of a faff, but it means you can actually isolate um, these individual flow and returns and also you've got the like flushing facilities um, as well so flushing this system is like absolutely paramount of an air source heat pump system so that makes it nice and easy we can isolate each individual sort of zone uh, flow and return to the cylinder etc and get it all flushed out well so my next task is i'm going to get the flow and return down here and then just pop through the wall for the air source heat pump so i'm just going to drop that in 28 I've also gone Addy Magna Clean Filter this time rather than the Viesman one. So we're going to try and uh, get that located in a decent location. So anyway, let me just run you through this new Addy filter. This is the Addy Magna Clean and it is heat pump specific. You can tell because you've got the HP here. Now I've moved away from the Viesman uh, filters mainly because the Addy ones, they really are brilliant. And obviously you can access the magnet quite simple and it's great for dosing. Now, the main difference really between this and say the Professional 2 is obviously a bit more bulkier if I can get it out. There you go. So you can see it's quite bulbous at the bottom. Obviously, they've had to increase the size, I guess, to allow for the increased flow rate that's required for air source heat pumps. So what I'm going to try and do is get this mounted on the return going back to the air source heat pump. We don't need to put it onto the return from the central heating, it actually needs to go on the return to the heat pump. Obviously it all follows the same route anyway. So the issue being is now I've just done these passovers, I really probably want my pipes coming through that gap there, but I might have to raise them up slightly. So hopefully we can get that filter in. Now this does come with the usual, um, maintenance spanner, big isolation valves. Yeah, I just think they're a lot more service friendly than some of these brass spiral cross ones, etc. So let's chuck this in and see how it looks in position. Okay, so we've gone as far as we can possibly go really without the hot water cylinder. So Bailey's done a nice job of tidying up that area over there. Managed to use a 28 mil pipe bender quite a lot, which I'm happy with. Saves a lot on fittings and looks a lot better. Now coming back to this um, Addy Magna Clean for the heat pumps, the only issue really is the flow has to come in the bottom. Now on this sort of setup, it's obviously not ideal really because I wanted to just drop it straight in here. So yes, maybe I kind of jumped the gun really, but I've had to sort of bend the pipe work around. So these um, pipes that are going through, they're going straight to the heat pump. So um, that's the flow, or sorry, return back to the pump. And that's the flow going into this unit. I've had to call the holes quite big because we're gonna sleeve it and then insulate it. So I believe they're 78 mil. But it's looking pretty neat, looking pretty tidy, I think. Um, yeah, like I say, there's not too much we can do now about the cylinder. So we're just waiting for that to turn up. Right, moving on to this underfloor heating system then. So Mark has finished laying these boards in the kitchen area. So at the moment, Bailey and I, we're just gonna scrape off all the glue. So this type of system it is a little bit more sort of time consuming than your standard stable system or even your overlay board. So obviously you've got the hardship of actually securing and fixing these boards to the joists. Uh, but also you've got to make sure it's all swept clean and tidy and all the glue is cut back so it's very similar to the same glue you'd use on standard chipboard flooring so let's have a look at these panels we're going to be pressing our pipes into so they are actually osb so it's not chipboard and they come in 1200 lengths now i'm assuming they're shorter in length and it's made from osb for us to have uh, 16 mil pipe into the grooves. So most of these um, sort of systems, they come like standard chip board floor size, but they only allow 12 mil pipe. So with 16 mil pipe, we get better actual heat output and uh, they're still 150 mil centers, which is great. So 
And then once the pipe is installed, trying to find it, I guess I'll just show you what's on the floor. We then lay on top these um, six mil overlay panels. Now they obviously have pipe indicators on them, which is great if you're gonna be securing floor or anything like that over the top of this. So you do have to make sure you install the overlay system to actually make it structural. Without it, they say that this 22 mil board is not actually structural. So it is absolutely imperative that it goes on. I was trying to speak to the underfloor heating company about just putting a Dietra mat straight on top of this silver board, but they weren't happy with it. They said it had to be the overlay board, then the Dietra mat. Now, one of the headaches we have with this type of system is the fact that the grooves only go in one direction. There's no real obvious way of kind of cutting across the room. So usually you'd run your flow and return around the perimeter of the room and then start coming back down. But we can't really do that unless we can feed the pipes under the floor. So what we'll more than likely do is run them, sort of running through this gap here where the skirting's gonna be, dive under the floor and then back up over here. So not quite figured that out yet, but we'll take a look in a sec. Underfloor heating manifold is on the other side of that wall there. So we're not too far away from that. And we're gonna have two loops on this area. So what we need to do now, just get this area all cleaned out, give it a sweep, give it a hoover, and then we can start working out the route for our pipe work. Right, that is the kitchen area all complete. We've just laid the overlay board and air tested all the pipe work. So I'll just show you where the manifold is again. So over here, we've just air tested the pipe work at this stage because we're not able to get it all pressurized and just labeled them all up. So they are all numbered. So on the um, final instructions uh, for the manifold, you will be able to tell which one you need to put in. And then I'll just get a sticking machine and just label them all up make it nice and clear. As you can see, the pipes are actually going underneath, so it is quite unusual. Um, I need to get those insulated, obviously, that are going underneath the floor. So when it comes to these overlay boards, they have to be um, installed. They give it structural integrity, so the 22 mil ISB is not structural by itself. You must have this overlay panel. I think it's six mil, it looks more like eight mil, I can't exactly remember. But they need to be laid in a brick bond fashion, like Bailey is just doing here. And the screws we are using are these ones that are provided. Now, you see these black lines here, that is where our underfloor heating pipes are, so it's quite self-explanatory. And then all these little red houses are where you can actually screw, so you've got no risk of actually puncturing the pipe work. And that's pretty much it. So once that's down, you can tile straight onto it if you want or straight with your LVT or carpets. Um, but I think the tiler throughout these rooms over here is actually gonna use some sort of Dietra mat. Um, but that's about it for now. So unfortunately, the hot water cylinder has not turned up. But thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully catch you on the next one.